Good afternoon. My name is Christina Byrne, and I'm the Public Outreach Department Manager for OCTA. And we'll be getting started in just a moment. We're just going to let another moment or so pass for folks to log in. Um, if you feel comfortable, please feel free to um, turn on your camera. And um, don't hesitate at any point during the session today um, to raise your hand or put information in the chat you'd like to share with the group. Again, my name is Christina Byrne, and I'm the Department Manager of Public Outreach at OCTA. This meeting is being recorded for documentation purposes, and we're going to go ahead and get started in just one moment. Please feel free um, to introduce yourself in the chat with your name and affiliation, and we will also be doing um, some self-introductions as well. We're going to go ahead and get started. Next slide, please. This meeting, again, is being recorded for um, documentation purposes, and we encourage verbal comments um, throughout the presentation at any point. If you want to raise your hand, we'll certainly call on you. Um, also, if you would like to put anything in the chat, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, written comments are very much encouraged. And feel free to raise your hand, use that button at the bottom of the Zoom screen in order for us to call on you as well. We will be monitoring that throughout. And again, this meeting is being recorded for documentation purposes in order for us to take notes of the feedback we received from all of you to get all of you today. Um, next slide, please. All right, we're going to go ahead and um, do some introductions. Again, my name is Christina Byrne, and I'm the department manager at OCTA for Public Outreach, and it's my pleasure to introduce um, Dan Fu. Dan, you're on mute. Dan, you're still on mute. So sorry. Apologies. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Christina and, and others for reminding me my mic is still on mute. Um, Dan Fu, I'm the project manager for this study, and I want to welcome everyone. I'm from the uh, planning department here at OCTA. So with that, I'll hand it off to Alice. Sorry, had to find my buttons. Hi, this is Alice Rogan, and I am the Director of Marketing and Public Outreach. Welcome, and thank you for your time. Allison Army? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Allison Army. I'm with uh, OCTA's Planning Department. All right, Jason Lee. Hi, Jason Lee. I'm with OCTA, uh, the Capital Programs Department. Thank you so much, Joel Zlotnick. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Joel Zlotnick. Um, I oversee OCTA's Public Information Office. And Matt Ankley. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Matt Ankley. I'm the Department Manager of Security and Emergency Preparedness here at OCTA. Melanie Masood. Hi, everyone. I'm Melanie Masood from Government Relations at OCTA. All right, and we have several um, individuals on the line with us today from our consultant team, Ariano and Associates. They're um, going to be helping us take notes for today and um, catalog all your incredible feedback. Um, and then I'd like to call on some of our other attendees that are joining us today. Matt Sinicori. Yeah, good afternoon, all. Matt Sinicori, City of Dana Point Public Works Director. Uh, and Selena. Hi, you have the Harbor Patrol, um, Orange County Sheriff's Department, all of the administrative staff here with you listening. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here. Is it, is it, I, per, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Is that Cheyenne? Sorry. No, I had a feeling. Uh, it's Jane. <laughs> Shane. Sorry, Shane. My apologies. 
That is okay. That is, I get it every time. I knew it would happen. So yeah, Shane Mall, Orange County, Orange County Fire Authority. I'm a division chief here, and I cover the south end of the county, which uh, covers the San Clemente Dana Point area. Very good. And is there anyone else um, from our emergency responder community that's on the line that I may not have had a chance to call on? All right, um, the next slide, please. And I'm gonna pass it over um, to, to Dan to go through the agenda. Hey, thank you, Christina, and welcome again, everyone. So I'm just gonna uh, quickly go over the PowerPoint that we have for today, because we really wanna hear from you all in terms of your views of the issues at hand. So with that, um, we'll, we'll talk about the history, the goals and objectives of this study, as well as the uh, study uh, schedule and the key milestones. And then Christina is gonna talk about the outreach efforts and the listening sessions and the next steps. So next slide, please. Next slide. So in terms of history, I'll just quickly go over um, for many of you who are uh, in South Orange County, you've um, at least seen it on the news, if not seen it firsthand. The emergency closures we have had with respect to the railroad in South Orange County, there's uh, approximately seven miles of the railroad that runs through the coastal uh, cities of San Clemente, Dana Point, and even portions of uh, San Juan Capistrano. And we've had multiple emergencies over the last several years, starting from fall of 2021 to as recent as uh, January of this year. And um, the bottom two pieces, are uh, basically acknowledging the efforts of the city of San Clemente with respect to what they're doing in terms of um, beach nourishment projects as well as even studying the, the coastline. So next slide, please. So the next several slides are just basically uh, uh, examples or uh, information on the three spot locations where we've had emergencies. This is down in the very south part of San Clemente down the Cypress Shore. We had a landslide back in late 21, and then subsequently some additional issues in 22 that led to us OCTA and Metro needing to put in tie back to effectively protect the railroad. Next slide. This particular issue, another landslide happened in um, summer of 2023, actually around spring of 2023. And it was as a result of the landslide that occurred on an adjacent property, in this case, the Casa Romantica uh, Garden Center that's owned and uh, not operated by the city of San Clemente, but by a, a nonprofit. And we protected it through the, uh, the installation of a temporary wall. Next slide, please. And last but not least, this happened all happened in late January, where there was another landslide near the Mariposa pedestrian um, Beach Trail, and there's the bridge that you can see in the upper left-hand corner that's been uh, since been taken down, and we're still actually working through remedial actions for this particular landslide. So um, limited rail service has resumed, but the area is still in need of a, uh, a solution so that uh, uh, if the landslide should fail further, then it it's, um, will protect the railroad. So next slide, please. Next slide. So I'll just take a quick moment and just talk about OCTA is undertaking a two-year study to look at the short and midterm solutions for protecting the railroad in place, the seven-mile stretch that we are talking about between the San Diego Orange County uh, border all the way up to about the southern limits of the city of San Juan Capistrano. Um, as part of this particular study, we're doing things a little bit atraditionally in terms of traditionally you'll have a planning study or an engineering study, and the team will actually come up with concepts, vet it publicly, and then go back to the drawing board and tweak things. We're doing this um, differently where we're having all of these listening sessions, today being among um, a, a number of these that we're having, uh, that we've already had, and that we'll continue to have until the main time frame. And then the consultant team will be going to the drawing board to come up with concepts based on the input that we receive from everyone that we've talked to. So in terms of short-term uh, solutions, we're looking for solutions that would last upwards of a decade. In terms of midterm solutions, we're looking for those that would last upwards of several decades. 
So the next slide, please. So as part of the study itself, we recognizing that there are a lot of immediate issues that we need to address. We talked quickly or briefly about all those emergencies that we've had since 2021. And so we directed our um, engineering team to go out there and actually take a look at the seven mile stretch, make sure there aren't any areas that are vulnerable to immediate landslides or um, there's a receding beach that's gonna affect the integrity of the railroad. And so I'll just go over those in a moment, but basically that's the, um, the part of this exercise is to try to reduce and minimize any more risk to the railroad such that we have these unplanned emergencies over the last several years. And we're hoping to minimize that. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. So in terms of the initial assessment, it's really looking at it from a railroad standpoint. How do we protect it, keep it up and running, whether it's for the passenger rail service or for the freight operators such as BNSF down in this particular part of the county. It, um, this particular exercise included ground truthing, the seven mile stretch with geologists and coastal engineers and, uh, and engineers, as well as a desktop review of previous studies and aerial photography review, as well as even drone video reviews. And so with that, they came up with areas that we need to keep an eye on. We call them monitoring areas, as well as areas that are in need of immediate actions. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with another emergency and we'll, we'll talk more about that. So next slide, please. So here's just a high level summary of the seven locations that uh, have been recommended for us to monitor and they're by mileposts. Um, the number one is basically in the northern limits, and then number seven is the most southerly limit. So the next several slides are going to go over the specific area. So next slide, please. In terms of areas number one and two, this is in the South Doheny Beach area, um, as well as the Pochi Beach area. There is um, a need to monitor these areas as a result of, for instance, beach erosion. Um, that's occurring, so it could uh, it could worsen over time. So we want to make sure we keep an eye on it be uh, before it becomes a major issue. Uh, next slide, please. Similarly, on uh, area number three, that's um, on the North Beach uh, side of the railroad, and that's uh, that particular area is lacking a beach, and so there needs to be a monitoring of that particular area. Otherwise, it could affect the integrity of the railroad should there be storm searches that are um, uh, coming up in the next winter season. And then uh, for numbers four and five, you can see that that's the subject of a problem that we've already already experienced. And that's in the Mariposa pedestrian bridge area at milepost 204.5. Next slide, please. For number six, this is Calafia Beach, where there's sedimentation on the inland side and it seeps into the railroad, the operating railroad right away. And so there's been issues over the years, as you can see the photo on the left-hand side where there's sedimentation. And then on the right-hand side, there's a lack of beach on the south, um, the south side of uh, San Clemente. This is just north of the Cypress Shore area that we have had issues with. And so there's a lack of beach there. And as a result, the lack of beach, which provides the buffer as well as the, um, the riprap that are there um, are affecting the integrity of the railroad. So next slide, please. So this is a summary of the four areas that are in need of immediate attention. And I'll, I'll go over these in a little more detail. Uh, next slide, please. For area number one, this is located, and by the way, there's a corresponding map that you can see that corresponds to the area, the four areas that we're going to be talking about. So this particular area that is near milepost 203.8 to about 0.9, there's effectively a lack of beach. And so um, there's going to be additional riprap that needs to be placed to protect the railroad, otherwise um, we could end up having issues with the integrity of the railroad if, uh, if there are additional storm searches. And next slide, please. 
Similarly, under area number two, you can see on that photo on the left side, there is no beach, hence there's really no buffer between the ocean and the railroad. And so with the um, riprap that is there, that's all that's protecting the railroad and there needs to be some additional riprap to protect the, uh, the railroad. Next slide. For this particular area, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is the area that we most recently experienced with respect to a landslide. And as a result, it dislodged, if you recall that photo from earlier, it dislodged a couple of spans of the pedestrian bridge that's since been removed as a result of uh, safety issues, potentially the uh, bridge coming down and taking out the railroad tracks. So for this particular area, that's already set in motion as far as um, issues that the, the team identified and then unfortunately the landslide all took place in late January. So as far as the solution is concerned, the engineering team is looking at some sort of a catchment wall that's on the inland side to basically um, block off any of additional debris that's gonna come down onto the railroad right away. This particular area is challenging primarily because of the fact that there is a pedestrian bridge that would need to be restored as well as other uh, infrastructures such as sewer line and I think the utilities that's in the area. So next slide, please. So this particular area is on the south end of San Clemente, just north of the Cypress Shore project, as I mentioned earlier, which was 206.8. Um, in this particular area, there's a, an opportunity for engineering, uh, engineer riprap since there is a beach for us to mobilize. So um, you've got a situation where there's not enough uh, protection of the railroad. So the solution is to provide engineer riprap. Next slide, please. So as far as next steps for the initial assessment, it was sent off to the PDT as well as the stakeholder working group and made publicly available. And we can certainly put that, um, it's on the website for the study. There's a link to it. We can certainly put that on, on this uh, chat today for the meeting. Um, and then what we wanted to do is also establish some sort of an emergency procedures such that not so much if, it's when these emergency events happen, there's a process set in place. And then obviously we need to talk to the regulatory permitting agencies such as the Coastal Commission, as well as the Army Corps of Engineers to discuss the solutions on a go forward basis. And then finally, there needs to be some sort of a mechanism to stockpile materials in the event of an emergency such that we can get it, get the materials to the site as quickly as possible, such that we can resume rail service. Next slide. So with that, I'll hand it over to Christina to talk about the public outreach efforts. Thank you, Dan. All right, next slide, please. All right, study outreach is a major part of this two-year study, and thus we're having the meeting here today. Um, we will have touch points throughout the study, and I'll be sharing uh, that with you in just a moment. In addition to these listening sessions that are happening February of this year through May, um, we're also going to be doing additional outreach during the draft concept development and the draft plan. And we look to the community, we look to the stakeholders that we're engaging with um, to continue to share the framework of this study, which as Dan mentioned, is to protect the existing coastal rail line and minimize service disruptions for up to the next 30 years as well as identify other potential collaboration opportunities. We're always open to feedback on how we can better collaborate with the community. And again, after the listening sessions, we will be looping back. Next slide, please. So this slide shows you all the study milestones um, that, that we're engaging in. Dan just mentioned the initial assessment and the listening sessions is what we're doing today. Um, after the development of the purpose and need and evaluation criteria, we will be going back to the community and you will be engaged regarding the initial concept development, refinement of the concepts and the draft feasibility study report. And we anticipate the final report being available in fall of 2025. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now is the bread and butter of why we're, we're meeting today. And that's the listening session. 
So um, the purpose of these listening sessions to or identify key stakeholders, hear from you, um, assess some, some of the vulnerabilities and issues of concern that you may um, want to share with us and opportunities for us to collaborate moving forward. And of course, most importantly, documenting your feedback. Next slide, please. So before we get started on some of the other um, more pointed questions, I just wanted to see if there's anyone on the call that has any comments regarding the potential reinforcement areas that Dan provided an overview of or any other conditions that you recommend we assess. And please feel free to unmute yourself, um, raise your hand, put comments in the chat, um, any of the above. I know we had um, Nicholas join us in addition to Shane, Selena, and Matt. So um, we would love to hear from all of you. So feel free to turn on your camera um, and, and share any feedback that you may have for us. Shane, do you have any thoughts you want to share? Uh, no, I don't actually at, at the moment. Um, I'm well aware of all those different areas that you guys are looking at. Um, and I'm glad to see you coming up with the plan, but yeah, I do not have anything unless you have anything specific for me. Okay, great. Uh, Selena. Hi, yeah. We're just listening to everybody's concerns. Great. And Matt Sinicori. Yeah. Thank you so much for putting this together. We're looking forward to our uh, agency breakout meeting that we're going to have in a couple of weeks. So we'll follow up with you on issues. Great. Sounds good. And thank Nicholas. you. Nicholas Ross, did you have any anything you wanted to share? All right, we'll move on. The next slide, please. So these are some of the specific questions that we had for this group regarding rail service disruptions. Um, the first being, in what ways could potential disruptions to the low sand rail corridor impact emergency services? and then um, consequently response times to the region. Any thoughts that you may have on that that you'd like to share with us for, for our consideration or input? This is Shane from the fire department. I, I think as long as you know we still have access to the area, for our, from our perspective, we, sh we should be fine as far as emergency response. Okay. And then what would be some of your biggest challenges to accessing um, the rail corridor during emergencies? Um, the, the biggest, you know, impediment I imagine is when we have coastal and bluff erosion risks um, with the hillside there. Um, any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think for us, just um, the big things we're always thinking about is, our, you know, is there a chance of any rail systems or any trains or anything still coming while we're responding? So I don't think that's going to obviously be an issue while this is going on. Um, so that concern's gone. And yeah, obviously, if, if the slope is still moving, um, obviously, we, we won't really work in that exact area um, unless we're making some rescues and things like that. So uh, from our perspective, I mean, the crews are well aware of those situations right now, and they kind of have a game plan on how we would approach it. Um, so in reality, we're, we're, we're good on that. Got it. And you're come you uh, just for a for my education, do you tip? You would typically, I, I imagine, come from the coast if you're able to, or is it a situation like, for instance, where Mariposa is right now? Um, I imagine it would be very challenging to go from the residential side, right? It would be you would maybe even have some sort of arrangement with the Coast Guard if there was issues with um, the loss of sand and actually accessing the beach there. Yeah, for sure. We'd have to work with the lifeguards and the Coast Guard on if we were needing to access from the water side. Um, for the most part, we have kind of been planning to access as best we can from the top, just to, uh, especially because that's where for us, you know, any potential structures that could be going down would probably a safer spot for us to take a look would be up there. So, yeah, we're, we'll more be accessing from the top side at first and then coordinating with lifeguards and Coast Guard for anything from the water. Excellent. Dan, do you have any follow-up questions regarding that? Yeah, actually, thank you, Christina. Shane, do you have um, regular meetings with the 
the city of San Clemente Public Works folks as far as kind of the status of what's going on over at Mariposa? I do. I mean, yeah, I, re I, I meet with them weekly on lots of different things and I've just been kind of staying up to speed on it. Um, and they've been really good at bringing me in the loop kind of anytime there's something new happening. Um, and so we've been pretty closely monitoring with them. The lifeguards down there have been doing a great job of flying drones and getting visual of, uh, of any new movement and then kind of just monitoring the movement that's already happened. So, um, definitely working really close with the city. Um, both San Clemente and Dana Point have been great with keeping me in the loop. So yeah, we, we meet regularly. That's great to know. We, we have both Jason Lee on this call and myself have weekly calls with the city public works folks. It's a whole team of their folks along with our consultant and our, our staff members. So we're completely plugged in as well. And we try to share as much information as far as what OCTA and Metrolink are planning to do in the say upcoming weeks or, or days. So that's uh, just wanting to make sure you were completely plugged in on that. So that's good to know that you are. Yeah, thank you. And Shane, is there any particular scenario that is most concerning to your agency? The probably biggest scenario besides obviously the erosion causing any structures to come down the hill that might be inhabited, but you know, as far as the rail system um, specifically is, is in the meantime, because to my understanding, there's still freight trains, right, that are coming through there at night. Yes, there yeah. there are freight trains coming through there. And in fact, um, Jason can talk a little more, if you don't mind, maybe spend a minute, Jason, and talk a little more about kind of what's going on uh, operationally. Yeah, so uh, as of now, actually, uh, Amtrak resume uh, partial service. Uh, I'm doing the early uh, commuting hours in the morning and also in the evening. Uh, so generally, there's uh, rail traffic going through um, uh, before 9 a.m. and then after um, uh, essentially 6 p.m. Um, and then after that, after 6 p.m., uh, I think uh, around 10 p.m. or so, there's uh, freight traffic going through at night. So uh, essentially, after our working hours, uh, there's there's going to be rail traffic going all, all around. Okay, yeah, that helps. Um, that's helpful. Yeah, I mean, I think in all reality, probably our biggest concern from emergency response side is is the off chance and the horrible chance of of a slide occurring while one of those uh, freight systems or Amtrak uh, trains are coming through the area with any sort of impedance on the track that would cause the the tra the the train to go off the tracks and maybe uh, knowing like, you know, as they come around Mariposa for the most part um, and even down at Cypress Shores area, there's on a high tide, there's nothing but water right there. So I think that's probably a uh, worst case scenario. If you're looking for my worst case scenario, it's a whole bunch of people in the water in a train or a whole bunch of whatever's on the freight trains in the water. So it's probably pretty grim, but that's kind of my worst case scenario for us. That's helpful. Thank you, Shane. What about you, Selena? Is there anything else that you can think of? No, there's, there's just, we don't have anything at this time. Okay, great. Um, I know um, that we had Nicholas Ross join us from um, San Juan Capistrano Police. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, to share anything you'd like to. No, not at this time. Um, you know, for for us, you know, we're we're more inland, so this would be more for San Clemente Police Services. Obviously, if there was some type of huge incident, we would respond to uh, to help them out in whatever law enforcement capacity that needed, or uh, assist fire and whatever you know scene security that they needed, as in past years. Great, that's very helpful. Thank you. And then. Um, are you find do you find these briefings like us offering th these opportunities helpful? Um, is there any best practices that you'd like us to consider with continuing to communicate the progress and findings after today's session? We will be emailing you all 
um, the, a copy of the PowerPoint presentation for you to share with your colleagues. And then of course, if you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one session with us, um, as Matt and Corey mentioned, we are doing with the city of Dana Point, we would be happy to do so with your agencies as well. And any other thoughts you may have about how we can communicate progress of the study, um, we'd be we'd be in, open to that feedback. The website will be updated um, as often as possible. The initial assessment that um, Dan reviewed with you today is available on the website right now, um, and we'll be sharing that website link shortly. Next slide, please. We're also looking for feedback from all of you on ways that we can involve your agency in the study process. Is there any other meetings that you may have or briefings that perhaps we could provide? Um, we could be we could provide a resource or share information with other stakeholders that you may, may be talking to. We're happy to attend any meetings you may want us to attend and um, share information that way as well. Anything any of you could think of would, would be, we're all ears. I think this information is good. I think working with the cities is, is good. So I think they've been good about passing along information. So any updates you have, you kind of have this email list. Yes. Um, that would be good. And then we'll make sure we pass those along to, from, from our side, having San Clemente and Dana Point, um, Anything that I get, I push out to the crews and they go get eyes on it too. So it's super helpful to know what's going on. So thank you. Our pleasure, Shane. Thank you. Um, yeah, anyway, like uh, the second bullet here, how we can work together to enhance community safety and public awareness about these rail corridor emergencies. Um, we've been trying to share information through our public information office, getting out press releases, sharing information with the cities and with their public information officers. Uh, and other another agency public awareness officers, we've been trying to to share information that way. Any other resources that we could utilize, um, also as well as our government relations department, they're also sharing things with various stakeholders and the cities themselves. Um, we would be we would be happy to do so. Dan, did you have anything you wanted to elaborate on on this slide? No, I don't have anything, but I I do kind of want to see if anybody even though it's um perhaps it could be outside of your area of expertise expertise but since you know i mentioned early in the in our discussion that we're having all of these listening sessions such that we get all the information gather all the information and then have the consulting team go to the drawing board and come up with solutions so i just wanted to at least offer up um if anybody has any thoughts about potential solutions or or even reasons why we've had so many um, issues over the last handful of years. So if anybody has any thoughts about that, I'm certainly open to hearing what your thoughts are. And maybe it might be helpful too for Ariano to put in the chat all the various organizations that are on this emergency services list to see if we're missing anybody. Um, we have engaged the county and uh, lifeguards as well as the Coast Guard. Um, they, the Coast Guard declined to participate in this particular call, but they are in our database. But if um, Ariano could go ahead and just put in the chat a list of all the other organizations that are on our database, that'd be helpful. And then if those that are on the call could take a look and see if there's anyone else that we might be missing, we, we would be happy to provide that feedback and in, invite them to future meetings. I wanted to jump in uh, about what Dan was asking. If there's any thoughts from this group about the importance of keeping this corridor uh, open and, and, and addressing various strategies to at least, um, you know, the short to midterm, to protect the rail in place while we look at longer term solutions of what where the rail should go down the road. Does anybody have some thoughts that they'd like to share about uh, how important it is to them or uh, um, any strategies that they've heard uh, thrown out there that we should look at? Okay. 
then I guess you guys are waiting for the next session when we actually come forward with some uh, concepts and strategies. Exactly. Very good. Thank you, Alice. Okay. All right. Um, next slide, please. All right, so we've kind of covered a little bit of this. Um, this is sort of our approach to public engagement, to have these listening sessions, to really get feedback like you provided to us today for us to document that feedback, share it with those that you represent. Like I mentioned, we'll be sharing with you the PowerPoint presentation and contact information regard for Dan and I, if you have any questions that may come up after today but we really want to continue a dialogue with all of you um, as this study moves forward. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So next steps, we have um, additional listening sessions that we're, we're working toward. The next one will be next week with Coastal Marine Habitat community-based organizations um, and environmental groups that's occurring on March 20th. We're hosting that at the San Clemente Community Center. And then we're going to be having a residential, like a homeowners association session on April 3rd. Um, and that's with all homeowners associations that are, that are close to this area um, and that is covered in the initial assessment. That session will be um, followed by two, two sessions with the general public, one virtual on April 11th and the second in person. That date of May 21st has actually changed. It's going to be May 30th, so we'll make that correction. May 30th, we're going to be having an in-person session with the general public and we're finalizing um, that location as well as an in-person session with elected officials on May 10th. Um, and that location is still to be um, finalized as well. So we really are trying to take a broad brush and engage as many various groups as possible during this listening session process. And then as the study moves forward, we will be um, sharing with everyone via our database um, the status of the of the um, the concepts and other and other elements as the study moves forward. Next slide, please. So the best way to get a hold of Dan and myself is via phone or email. And this is the project website that I referenced earlier. This website is updated as soon as we have new information. So please um, log on to that site, share it with others you may be interested in this study. Um, by way of you being a part of this call, you have been automatically added to our database. So you do not know, need to go to the project website to sign up. But if you know of anyone that would like to receive regular updates from us, please encourage them to go to the project website. They can sign up with their phone and um, email information, their agency information. So as soon as any information is available, um, we, can, we can send it out to them. Any other additional comments or questions um, before, before we end today's session? Dan, did you have anything else? Any, any final words? No, but I just want to thank everyone for your participation today. And Matt, we look forward to meeting in your city late on in the month. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, and we really appreciate your um, in, insight today. And again, we'll be sending you a copy of this PowerPoint presentation in the next day or so. Have a great rest of your day.